Back in January, Captain Luma uploaded a video detailing a new maze generating algorithm they had come up with, which they would eventually name Origin Shift. It can gradually change a maze over time, with the benefit that you can stop it at any moment and get a perfect maze. The video started to see a lot of interest in June, with Matt Batwings also featuring it in his video on maze generation. And people liked it. It was exciting that a useful new algorithm could be discovered by someone who wasn't an expert in the field and just wanted a new way to generate mazes in Minecraft. And like, compare this to the old algorithm that people used to use called Aldous Broder, which has been around since the 80s. It's horrible, slow, and everyone hates it. Even Wikipedia hates it. So clearly Origin Shift is a big improvement. And sure, there were some commenters saying, well it's not technically an algorithm, and the technical term for it is an arborescence, and someone's probably done a similar thing before at some point. But as one commenter pointed out, even if it turns out somebody had done some maths in the past that technically described Origin Shift, who cares? No one had found a nice way of implementing the algorithm, and no one had thought to use it to change existing mazes. Captain Luma's discovery is exciting, and definitely useful. I don't want to argue with that. But as far as I can tell, no one online has actually bothered to do some proper research into the maths. Because the maths definitely exists, even if it only applies to Origin Shift retrospectively. And it leads to a very shocking result. That Origin Shift, the fancy new algorithm for generating mazes, does exactly the same thing as Aldous Broder, the algorithm from the 80s that everyone hates. And that initially seems impossible, but I promise I'll explain what I mean. So in this video I'm going to explain what Aldous Broder is, and why it's bad, what Origin Shift is and why it's much better, and why, surprisingly, they both actually do the same thing. And I'm going to be mixing maze generation terminology with graph theory terminology, so apologies in advance. So first of all, you might be used to seeing mazes that look like this, but in this video I'm going to go with a more common approach where we have a grid of rooms or cells, and then we connect them with bridges or edges. So the blocks represent where you can walk. Don't get confused. This way it's easier to see how the maze branches out. And if you wanted to turn this into a traditional maze, you could obviously add an entrance and an exit anywhere you like. I'm also only concerned with perfect mazes, which means there's exactly one way to get from any cell to any other cell without backtracking. So no loops. And in maths, this shape would be known as a tree, because of how it branches out. If the tree reaches every cell, then it's a spanning tree, but something like this is also a tree. So one way to generate a perfect maze would be to pick a place to start from, called the roots, and then grow a tree outwards until it reaches every cell. And as you might imagine, there are loads of different ways to grow a tree. You could pick a random part of the tree, create a new branch, and repeat. Or you could extend it more than one step at a time, or keep growing one branch until you run out of space. And each of these algorithms gives slightly different looking mazes, either lots of dead ends or long corridors. But how about if we want a perfectly random maze? So, of all the possible mazes you could make, we want each one to be equally as likely to appear. Or in maths, you might say you're choosing a uniformly random spanning tree. And there are a few ways of doing this, but probably the most famous is known as Aldous Broder. Aldous and Broder are the names of two different people who both happened to come up with the same algorithm around the same time, after both of them had similar conversations with the same mutual friend. The idea is to grow your tree by using a random walk. So you start anywhere you like, and you then choose a random neighbouring cell to jump to next. If you haven't been there before, you create a branch and then you repeat. So at each step you're jumping to a random neighbour, but you only make a new branch if it's somewhere you haven't been before. And that stops you from creating loops. Once you've visited all cells, you'll have created a spanning tree. So the big problem here is that you can get stuck in the middle of the tree for a long time without making any progress. And it's tempting to say, well why not just move towards the empty bits? Or just always jump from the end of a branch? But then it wouldn't be uniformly random. The whole benefit of Aldous Broder is that you end up with a uniform random maze. You kind of just have to let it do its thing. And there are certainly ways to speed it up towards the end by creating a hybrid algorithm, but we'll cover that a bit later. And it's worth taking a moment to recognise how surprising this is. Like, you could start in the middle, or start in the corner every time, and it will still give you a uniform random result each time you run it. And your maze doesn't need to be square shaped. So for a simple example, if you have a ring of cells, and you choose somewhere to start, then you can randomly go either clockwise or anti-clockwise each turn, building bridges where necessary. So let's say you keep going until there's only one gap left in your ring. The question is, is the gap more likely to be close to where you started, or far away from where you started? And it might feel like it's more likely to be further away, 
but actually this is just Aldous Broder, so it's just as likely to be any possible bridge segment that's missing. It's uniformly random. That's quite strange. So now let's have a look at something completely different. Origin Shift starts with a perfect maze. So the one that Captain Luma used looks something like this. It's very basic, but it's technically a maze. You choose a cell to be your origin, and then you label all the edges so they're pointing along a path towards the origin. Then each turn, you pick a random neighbouring cell to move the origin to. You create a new edge along the gap you just jumped across, pointing towards the new origin, and then delete the old edge that was coming out of that cell. So to be clear, there are two possibilities. If the origin jumps across a gap, then you build a new bridge and delete an old one. Or if the origin walks along a bridge, then all you do is reverse the direction of that bridge so it points towards the new origin. You can keep doing this as many times as you like, and you can stop whenever you want because at each step, it's still a perfect maze. Obviously, if you stop too early, then it will still look like the old maze in places. But equally, you can keep it running for as long as you like, and it will keep changing things around. It's a constantly changing maze. And similar to before, you might be tempted to pick up the origin and move it to an area it hasn't visited yet, or force it to move in a certain way, but somehow that affects the randomness of the algorithm. And if you really wanted to do that, then there are other algorithms that could do a similar thing. So what do I mean when I say that this does the same thing as Aldous Broder? Well, I think there are three use cases for origin shift. The first is to generate a completely new maze. So you keep running the algorithm until the maze is very different to how it started. And in this case, it turns out that it's the same as Aldous Broder. That's not that surprising, since, as you might have guessed, Origin Shift also creates a uniform random maze. So in a sense, they're doing the same thing. But you can also pick a place to start Origin Shift, and then run it for just a certain number of steps, and then stop. And this, shockingly, is also exactly the same as running Aldous Broder starting from the same place and with the same stopping condition. Or more precisely, we'll need a simple Aldous Broder hybrid that I'll talk about. But the third way to use Origin Shift, which is how Captain Luma originally used it, is for generating a sequence of mazes. So for example, you could have the maze constantly change while someone is inside it. And this isn't the same as Aldous Broder. So let's talk about this option first. Because, as others have pointed out, if you're changing a maze while someone's in it, then it doesn't need to be a perfect maze. In fact, it doesn't need to ever be completable at any one time, because you can use the changing doors to get to your destination. Like an airlock. And anyway, Origin Shift isn't particularly well suited for this. You'll end up with one part of the maze that's changing a lot, so if you're near the origin then you can just wait for the doors to open to go through, but if you're far away from the origin, then nothing looks like it's changing. If you do still want to build a changing maze, then maybe have a look at DQWERTYC's videos. Their channel is actually how I found out about Origin Shift originally, and they have some fantastic videos on maze generation algorithms, as well as one easy way to change an entire maze quickly. I'm also using their maze generators for the visuals in this video, so huge thanks for that. But you might be thinking, could generating a sequence of mazes like this still have applications in Markov chain theory? Meaning, is it interesting to study how the maze changes over time? And the answer is yes. In fact, origin shift in this context was used in a proof of the Markov chain tree theorem in 1988. And it's funny seeing it described in very formal language. But for the rest of this video, we're going to focus on these two cases, where you're running origin shift to generate a maze. And this, shockingly, has the same result as running Aldous Broder. And by that, I mean that they have the same probability distribution. So a maze generated by origin shift is just as likely to be generated by Aldous Broder. They may have different ways of getting there, but it's the same end result. So let's go back and have another look at Aldous Broder. Like I mentioned, one of the biggest drawbacks is that it's easy enough to generate a large tree, but it can take a long time to fill out all the gaps. So that's where hybrid algorithms come in. So for example, you could swap to doing Wilson's algorithm, which finds a way to randomly connect all the other cells back to the tree. But if you just wanted the simplest possible way to fill in the gaps, then one way to do it would be to take each unvisited cell and connect it towards the root. So in this case, the root is in the bottom right, so we might draw the lines going to the right. And for cells on the right wall, we can connect them going downwards. It's not very pretty, but it gets the job done. And it's not too hard to see that the end result is still a spanning tree. But we can generalise this. So let's say we start off with some pre-generated maze. And again, for example, we can take this very simple maze. Then we choose somewhere to start our Aldous Broder algorithm, a root. And so what we do is we draw on directions on the original tree that point towards the root. We can then run Aldous Broder for as long as we like, and at the end it might not be finished. So for each unvisited cell, we draw on the edge that connects it towards the root, using the directions we made earlier. 
but basically filling in the gaps with the old maze. The end result is still a spanning tree, and you could do this with whatever original maze you wanted. Or you could do something more complicated, like you could randomly generate the rest of the maze using a different algorithm, but this example is the most simple hybrid algorithm you could come up with. On the other hand, notice that you could run origin shift on an empty graph. So each turn, you move the origin somewhere, you create a new directed edge, and you remove the old directed edge coming out if there is one. Then you repeat. And if you don't end up visiting everywhere, then similarly, you could combine it with an original maze to get a spanning tree. And this version of origin shift is exactly the same as the original version. I've just changed how we're looking at it. So this new origin shift slowly builds up a tree, similar to how Aldous Broder also builds up a tree. But they still look like different algorithms. For example, origin shift can go back and change its tree, whereas Aldous Broder can't. The next step here is to realize that origin shift is actually the same thing as doing Aldous Broder in reverse. So let's say you're generating a tree using Aldous Broder. Wherever you start will be the root of the tree. And each time we make an edge, we can point it backwards towards where we came from. So each cell in our tree, except the root, will end up with exactly one edge pointing out of it. And if you follow the arrows, you'll end up back at the root. Then for each cell, all we need to know is the first time that the walk entered that cell. We then point the edge towards where the walk came from. All the other times the walk entered this cell are unimportant. Now let's switch to looking at origin shifts. We can again generate a tree, but this time the root is the origin, so it's wherever the origin finished, that's where the root of our tree is. Then similarly, each cell in our tree other than the root will have exactly one edge directed out of it. Which direction will that edge be in? Well, it actually only depends on the last time the origin visited this cell. Because it came into this cell, deleted the old edge that was coming out, then made a new edge pointing in the new direction as it left. So each cell has an edge pointing to where the origin last exited. But this is a time reversal. If Aldous Broder generates a certain tree when the walk starts at the root, goes for a while and ends up somewhere else, then origin shift will generate exactly the same tree if the origin starts at the end of the walk and follows the path backwards towards the root. Each edge in the tree can be thought of as either the first entrance edge from Aldous Broder or the last exit edge of origin shift. So in maths, origin shift is more often known as reverse Aldous Broder. Or if you're using it to change an existing spanning tree, then you might call it a reverse Aldous Broder hybrid. But again, I'll point out that there's a big difference between describing some maths in a paper somewhere and realizing there's a nice way of implementing it practically that lends itself to easily changing mazes. In fact, earlier I mentioned that origin shift was used in a proof of the Markov chain tree theorem from 1988. Well, this paper interested a mathematician called Diaconis, who then discussed it with his friends, Aldous and Broder. And that's what inspired them to create the Aldous Broder algorithm. So, in a sense, origin shift predates Aldous Broder. Broder talks a lot about the reverse algorithm, effectively origin shift, in his original paper, and it's an important part of his proof. He calls Aldous Broder a forward tree and origin shift a backward tree. And he even shows that the probability a backward tree generated for k turns gives us a certain tree t is exactly the same as the probability that a forward tree generates that same tree t in k turns. In other words, origin shift and Aldous Broder create the same trees with the same probability. And that sounds exactly like what we're trying to prove, but it's not quite, because you'll notice he's also included these pies, which in this context don't represent 3.14. They represent randomly choosing where you start each algorithm, according to what's known as a stationary distribution. So for us, that just means a cell with more neighbours is more likely to be chosen as our starting point. So for a square maze, it's more likely to start in the middle than at the edge. And so, this is saying that if you randomly choose the starting point for Aldous Broder and run it for a while, you're just as likely to generate the same tree by randomly choosing to start origin shift at the end point and working backwards. But I don't want to randomly choose where to start my algorithms. I want to start both origin shift and Aldous Broder in the same place. And still, shockingly, these will both generate the same trees with the same probability. This result was actually only proved fairly recently, back in 2020, in a paper by Yiping Hu. Russell Leons and Pengfei Tang, called a reverse Aldous Broder algorithm. They managed to show that if you start Aldous Broder and Origin Shift at the same place, and run it for the same number of turns, then they both generate the same trees with the same probability. 
And I can't emphasize enough how crazy this is. So for example, try generating a tree using origin shifts, starting in the corner of a grid, counting how many turns you take, and making a note of where you end up. Then, you can always find a corresponding Aldus Broder path that generates the same tree, starting and ending in the same place, with the same probability of occurring, that takes the same number of turns. But in general, the Aldus Broder path will look completely different to the origin shift path. They can go a completely different way, but end up with the same results. So, what if we make the origin shift paths take one more step? Now the tree is completely different. And Aldus Broder can't make any move that matches the origin shift tree. But there's still always going to be an Aldus Broder path that starts in the corner, ends in the same place as the origin shift path, and generates the same tree in the same number of moves. It's just going to be very different to the one we'd calculated previously. So at each stage in the process, Origin Shift and Aldus Broder are doing very different things, but overall, they end up generating exactly the same trees with the same probability. The main part of the 2020 paper is trying to find some permutation where you input the path used for Origin Shift, and it outputs a path you could use for Aldus Broder that starts and ends in the same place, has the same length and the same probability of occurring, and would create the same tree as generated by Origin Shift. Exactly how this permutation works is complex and well beyond the scope of this video. I should also point out that the paper includes a number of different stopping conditions under which origin shift is the same as Aldus Broder. So far we've seen that they're the same when running them for the same number of turns, but you could also run them until they reach a certain cell, or something like that, and they'll still be the same. You could also probably come up with some stopping conditions in which they're different if you want to, but my point is that for most general uses of origin shift, you'll get exactly the same probability distribution as if you ran Aldus Broder starting in the same place with the same stopping condition. Of course, running Aldus Broder and then doing the hybrid method isn't always very convenient, so origin shift may well be the better choice depending on your setup. But if you are considering using it, then it's important to understand that you could achieve the same result by using Aldus Broder. And of course, there are plenty of other maze generating algorithms to consider as well. I'll end by reiterating the fact that you don't need to be an expert in maths or computer science to come up with a new algorithm. If you find something interesting and it works, then it works. You don't need to use the same terminology as everyone else if it doesn't suit your needs, and you don't need to have a good understanding of previous developments to create something new. Obviously, it is often helpful to know what came before, but sometimes it takes someone on the outside to see a different way of doing things. But when that does happen, and something new is suggested, I think it's important for people more familiar with the maths not to complain about terminology or just say, well, someone else has probably thought of this at some point before, but instead to work out exactly where this new development fits inside existing theory and what previous results can be applied. Thanks for watching, goodbye.